Historically, people with disabilities were often separated from the general population, housed in institutions throughout the country. In the 20th century, disability issues became more visible in mainstream America, resulting in federal legislation and activism, including the National Disability Rights and Independent Living Movement. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Tatiana Anderson. Independent living advocates foresee a society in which people with disabilities achieve full integration, independence, and civil rights. And joining me to talk about this very important topic is Rima McCoy McDeed. She is the executive director of the National Council on Independent Living. And Rima, thanks for being here. Thank you, Tatiana. I'm thrilled to be with you today. So this is all personal for you as a person who is living with autism. I'm wondering how that perspective really helps you in approaching how to help other people also achieve independent living. That's a great question, Tatiana. I, as an autistic person, the work that I do isn't just a job, it's my life. And it's informed by my own personal experiences with attempting to engage with the, the, the systems in our country to ensure that my, my needs associated with my disability are met. And so I use that personal experience to inform how I work to ensure that the barriers that I've experienced are not experienced by, by others who are attempting to, to get their needs met as well. You talk about um, experience and, and what you've gone through and what that does for your work. And there has been a shift over time, as I'm sure you've seen, in what independent living has meant historically. So, you know, what your parents dealt with, they were people who were living with disabilities versus what you've gone through over the years versus what people are going through now has changed. And I'm wondering what your perspective is on what the change has been. Yeah, my parents' generation experienced uh, the, the shift from uh, the default setting for people with disabilities being living in institutions to living in the community. And uh, in the, the 70s and 80s, that meant that people with disabilities were, were living in group homes, in their parents' houses, uh, in, in, in the community, but not necessarily independently. And so the shift has, has, has sort of propelled people with disabilities from being integrated kind of in a peripheral sense to being integrated in, in a real meaningful, substantial sense. Uh, people with disabilities living independently in our own homes, in our own apartments, uh, working, paying taxes, that kind of thing. And, and there's still work that needs to be done, but we certainly have come a long way in the past generation or so. So you say there's still work that needs to be done. So what does full integration, independence and civil rights look like for those who are living with disabilities once this mission is, is, is achieved? I mean, what do they have to do? What are some of the things that they need to get to make that happen? We are, we are experiencing a shift from people with disabilities being tokenized, uh, being included kind of in a, in a very superficial way to people with disabilities becoming peers, becoming colleagues, becoming present, wherever decisions are being made that, that impact people with disabilities. And as the largest marginalized group in the country, anywhere decisions are being made, people with disabilities are being impacted. And we really are working to ensure that everybody in the country understands that. You know, people with disabilities are not just impacted by healthcare decisions. People with disabilities want clean water and safe schools for their children too. And, and so that, that's, that's the message that we, we continue to drive today in the hopes that tomorrow, uh, people with disabilities really truly are fully included. So you do see a crossover with civil rights and disability rights. And I'm wondering if you can delve a little bit deeper into that for those who might not be aware of that connection. Absolutely. There absolutely is a crossover between civil rights and disability rights, simply because disability rights includes people with disabilities who are also people of color. And civil rights also include people of color who are also people with disabilities. I think that that, that fact 
often uh, is not taken into consideration uh, when we're discussing people with disabilities or people of color. You know, people can uh, exist at more than one intersection, and and that that is the work of inclusion that really needs to be happening today to ensure that people with disabilities who are also people of color are having their needs met as well. And Rima, if people want to find out more about your organization, about the work you do, what's the website? Where can they go? People are welcome to find us at nickel.org. That's N-C-I-L dot O-R-G. Rima McCoy McDeed of the National Council on Independent Living. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Tatiana. It's been a real pleasure. And thanks to our viewers as well for watching. As always, for more great conversations with leaders in your own community and across the nation, log on to ComcastNewsmakers.com. I'm Tatiana Anderson.